So let us look at the final tips for both categories of students who are going to write NEET this year and also students who are preparing for the NEET in the longer run. Hi, NEET is a challenging entrance examination. It is taken up by about 16 lakh students across the country. Now that makes it one of the most hotly contested examinations in the world given the number of questions that it tests and the number of uh, aspirants who take the examination versus the number of seats available based on the outcome of that exam. The NEET examination, which is the entrance examination for the various medical colleges in the country, my dear students and parents, is definitely one of the most challenging entrance examinations in India. Now, as a teacher for close to 25 years, I have been training motivated students in various metro cities across the country for cracking this NEET examination. Now, my best performance as a teacher, one of my students has secured the first rank in a state level medical entrance examination and various other ranks in the two digits and the three digits category. So from my direct experience of teaching these motivated students, why do I keep saying motivated students? I always tell students and parents is that as a teacher, I can only do one part. Now, to produce the sound of success, if this is a clap of success, I can only do one part unless you as a student reciprocate with equal vigor with your effort and your intensity, I cannot produce the sound of success. So therefore, you really need to be prepared to put in the effort required to crack this entrance examination. So let's analyze the numbers. 16 lakh students, but then don't get worried about the numbers. The numbers very clearly are very high, but let me tell you a thumb rule, only 25% of these numbers really represent serious competition, which means 25% is one fourth, one fourth of 16 lakhs is four lakhs, char lakh. That is the real competition because the remaining 12 lakh of students who also write the examination, they really don't really compete because they are not in the competition zone. They really don't know the difference between a competitive participation and a casual participation. Now, don't get me wrong. It doesn't mean that those 12 lakh students are underprepared students. They are good students who secure good ranks in the, sorry, good marks in the school examinations. But the requirement of an entrance examination is very different from the challenges posted by a school or a board examination. Three hours of time, 180 questions, how you perform, how you think for even one second matters. So it really requires a really long-term preparation. Students come to my academy, the physics chamber, where I'm the founder and the teacher, from seventh standard onwards to prepare for this examination, which is five years ahead. Why is that? Because parents and students now understand that early start has an advantage. Now, it is an evolutionary process. Earlier on, let us say 20 years back, students used to prepare for the NEET examination only after they finished 10th standard. But now, they slowly start understanding that an early start gives you that momentum, which is my favorite word in physics also as a physics teacher. Momentum means the inability to stop, which means once you keep going, you can keep going. So students start as early as seventh standard. They start very small. They absorb micro modules, start learning the concepts in physics, chemistry and biology in very, very small modules. The application part of physics which is a major, major challenge for students after 10th standard need to be addressed much earlier because doctors usually tend to think, or I would say not doctors, medical aspirants tend to think lightly about physics because they tend to think that physics is only for engineers or scientists, etc. Not at all. Physics is an application science. And to the extent that it is a game changer in the actual NEET examination because the subjects are physics, chemistry, botany and zoology, four parts. Of these, chemistry, botany and zoology are by historically, this is the analysis that I've been doing for the last 20 plus years. Historically, good students score equal marks in the combination of physics, botany and zoology. Sorry, 
chemistry, botany, and zoology, the total of that marks will be pretty much the same. Now, the real differentiator happens to be physics. The real differentiator is physics, which means a student who does well in physics really makes a good impact in the national scenario. Why is that? Let me give an example. You think about uh, uh, the Indian cricket team currently. You have a fantastic team, right? Now, if you look at the current Indian cricket team and you take out the players like Virat Kohli, Rohit Sharma and Shigar Tawain, you assume that these three players are not there in the Indian cricket team. Then the Indian cricket team boils down to an average international side. They are no longer a world-beating side. This is what happens with physics in the case of NEET. Because everybody finds it challenging and because people think that it is not important, it actually makes a big difference when you score higher in physics. So, get your fundamentals right to the NEET aspirants who are gearing up for the NEET exam currently. Let me tell you, time management is the key. When you have 180 questions and when you have three hours, you really don't have the liberty to take a break after two hours and then stretch your hand, look at the ceiling, catch your breath again and go back into the examination. You really cannot afford that liberty. So, complete focus for three hours and trying to get into that mode of actually doing one more question. This is my favorite phrase for my students. Somehow be in the game for three full hours and ensure if you can just squeeze out one more question when you have the remaining one minute, two minutes at the end of the examination. And that can be a game changer because we have the live example in front of us, right? In 1984, our international sprinter, P.T. Usha, she lost the Olympic medal by one by hundredth of a second. Can you imagine one by hundredth of a second? Even in today's electronic age, it is mighty difficult to imagine one by hundredth of a second. You take up one second, cut it into one hundred parts, and that one sliver of a part is the difference with which she lost the bronze medal. But the fact remains that she's not an Olympic uh, medal at all. Hard luck, but that's the reality. That's the intensity of competition. The fact is, students, because the competition is so close and tight, you are much closer to the finishing line than you think. So, my clear advice to students moving into the examination is do not give up your intensity at any point running into the examination. There are so many students who uh, feel that I this is the maximum I can do. I am done. I am squeezed out. I cannot do anymore. Now, you have to understand one thing. When you feel like that, there are thousands of other good students who also feel like that. Which means, if you can just keep going, just one more minute, two more minutes, you are having that extra edge. And that extra edge will push your all India rank by 2,000, 3,000 uh, ranks higher. There is a very... A powerful word which I use my students to train and teach my students that is called automaticity. What is automaticity students? When you see a question, certain thingies about that question, equations or formulae or concepts will have to hit your mind without you doing any work. Let me give an example. You are driving a car. You need to turn left. Do you really think, okay, I need to take a turn 60 degrees to the left, so I need to apply a torque, which is a physics principle when you need to turn something to the left or right. I have to apply a small torque and then turn the steering wheel 60 degrees to the left. Do you really tell yourself that? No, you, you're, you're in auto mode, what we can see as an autopilot mode. You don't process this information at all. Similarly, many of the concepts have to hit you in the autopilot mode or what I call as automaticity. When that happens, you will be in the attack mode for questions. Now we are getting into real need specific test taking strategies. Attack mode means as you read, you have to solve. It is not like you read the question, understand, digest and then put pen to paper and solve. I tell my students, there are so many questions which you can solve without even putting pen to paper without even putting pen to paper. And that's the, that's the kind of speed that will give you the final edge in a competitive entrance examination. So let us look at the final tips for both categories of students who are going to write NEET this year and also students who are preparing for the NEET in the longer run. Those who are writing NEET this year, understand you have given a lot of preparation, continue the momentum, never break, always understand 
you are much closer to the finish line than you really think it is. Because when you find the going difficult, there are thousands of students who find the going difficult as well. So just keep the momentum going. For the younger group who are in the younger classes, well, start early is a sure shot success for any competitive entrance examination because you will start building that automaticity of thinking process. You will start getting into the attack mode of questions because you will start working with large number of questions and formats and tests, etc. Long-term preparation, my dear students and parents, always, always helps. Bye-bye and wish you all the very best. Josh Talks is now a Spotify exclusive podcast. The audio version of our talks will be available only on Spotify. If you like this video and you'd like to listen to more inspiring stories like this, please follow the Josh Talks podcast only on Spotify. Tell us what you think about this video and don't forget to like, share and subscribe.